As I said at the beginning of Mass, the ushers now distribute my brochures. Uh, please hang on to it. Take as many as you want. We have more than we need. You can give them out at weddings and funerals, bar mitzvahs, all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast, anything you go to. Today, of course, we have this wonderful gospel with the Beatitudes. And before that, we have St. Paul reminding us, you know, you're not so great. You're people who are blessed and dependent on God, but you don't come from great everything. And he reminds us of this. And you know, the Beatitudes are really wonderful. They say when Jesus sat down now, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to them, to him, and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What he's saying is, blessed are you when you are poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn, they will be comforted. How often do we need comfort? Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Blessed are the merciful, for they will show mercy. When was the last time you showed mercy? When was the last time you were the recipient of mercy? Mercy is really important especially for us Christians, those who follow a merciful and loving God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. When was the last time you brought about peace? When was the last time you were the recipient of someone bringing about peace? These are things that are important, and they're very important for us who call ourselves Christians. You know, God is with us all the time, but we forget sometimes that as Christians, we really are different. It doesn't mean we're better than other people. It just means that we're different. We're people who count on God. I don't know any of you, of course. I only came in yesterday. I'm leaving this afternoon. But I'm sure there are people here who God is present to all the time. I'm sure there are people here who put all their trust, their mercy, everything in God. Your lives are individual. Whatever you do, whatever your life is in your life with God, that is yours. You know, I think it's really important to remember, this week we celebrated the Feast of St. Francis de Sales, 17th, um, 16th something. And he was the first, now this is unbelievable, but he was the first to say that lay people had to have a spiritual life also. At his time, it was only people in convents and monasteries and all like that who studied to have a spiritual life. No one paid much attention to lay people. I'm sure they did have their spiritual life, but they thought, you know, and he said, no, 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 whether you were in the service, whether you were a farmer, whether you are a mother, whatever you are, you have a spiritual life. You have a, and we're so grateful, but we had it already, but we didn't even know it. And he was very insistent, he wrote the Introduction to the Devout Life, uh, which talks about all of this, 17th century. And the thing he said, which was remarkable, he said, every person should spend one hour a day in prayer. How many of us do that, spend an hour a day in prayer? And then he said, for those of you who are really busy, you're busy from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you have to spend two hours in prayer. That's how prayer is so important to us. And there's nothing that can replace it. Nothing can replace prayer. Some people find it easier to pray than other people do but it's part of who we are. We need to remember over and over and over that we are different because we're Christians. We're different. There's something else leading us, to, pushing us on, something that reminds us over and over and over 
that we're here for one another. We're here for one another. Some of you probably suffer in ways no one even knows. Your life is full of suffering. Sometimes people don't even let their best friends know what they're going through. But Jesus knows. Jesus is with us all the time. That's why we never give up. No matter how bad things are, no matter we consider ourselves the worst sinner in the world, Jesus is with us. He doesn't come to condemn us. Those of you who are a few bit older, remember years ago, everything, we were going to hell no matter what we did, and we were going to, you know, I had confession all the time and all like this. But then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, whoa, God is a God of love. He doesn't condemn. He brings us out of our sinfulness. I'm not saying he loves our sinfulness, but he brings us out of our sinfulness to make us the great people he has called us to be. I think that is so important. Each one of us is called to greatness, greatness in God and living the Beatitudes. As I said, I'm here today preaching for Cross Catholic Outreach. Um, right now, because of the generosity of our Catholic people, we're able to help in about 30 or 60 missions. The thing that is most important to us is that we give people Jesus. Pope Benedict XVI, who left us a couple of weeks ago, he always said, if you don't give them Jesus, you're not giving them enough. Now, we've been in existence for 21 years. From the time we began, <clears throat> Uh, every day, there are only four who started Cross Catholic Outreach. Every day we spend an hour in prayer. Now there are about 200 of us. And through Zoom, we all come together and have an hour of prayer every single morning. And it's wonderful. People take turns while they're assigned to give the devotion. And some of them are absolutely unbelievable. Some of our people who minister at cross, lay people, their lives are so filled with God. It's just wonderful to see. And they feel so blessed to be able to, to work at a, country, at a company where they're able to pray an hour every morning and which people really care for them. Now, Tuesday is a special day for us because on Tuesday we pray for our donors by name. We don't just say, uh, you know, uh, for Joe Smith. We say for Joe Smith, who is having terrible problems with uh, all sorts of addictions, and he needs, uh, he needs as much help as he can get. Uh, and we always remember our donors are very important to us. I'm going to cut my homily, obviously. and. Uh, Wednesday, we have what we call a mission report in which we have 60 missions around the world and people give a report on what's happening in these missions, which is very, very important. We always used to pray for uh, Ethiopia. Uh, they had terrible things going on in Tigre in Ethiopia. And the thing that bothered me the most about Ethiopia is that they had children and adults who were dying from starvation. They were dying. And uh, we sent all the food they would ever need, and those in charge would not let those having dying people have that food. Now, that to me is evil. Is there evil in the world? That to me is evil. And so we try to help as much as we can with all the people we're able to help because of your goodness and kindness and the ability you give us uh, to do this work. Um, if you take the brochure now and just open it to the center, you'll see the countries we're in. We are in the Caribbean, North, Central, and South America. We are in Africa and we're in Asia. What we do is we go into a diocese and we ask the bishops, may we come into your diocese and how do you want us to help you? What can we do? We don't help 
bishops what we're, we're going to do, we ask them. You see in that opening, there's our president and CEO, Jim Kavanaugh. He's standing with the Holy Father. And uh, uh, he's an unusual man. His whole family is unusually. They've, they're close to God. They've always been close to God. And he, you know, again, he just says, how can we help the church? How can we help the poor? God, through our donors, has been very, very good to us. We have a lot of money we can use because people are so good to us. I was telling the people at the other mass, um, light a, a candle, uh, it has offered us a million dollars, and they said, if we give you the million dollars, what are you gonna do with it? So we had a place in Central America that we really felt needed help. They were, they were so primitive, they didn't even speak Spanish. They had their own language. And so it was very difficult, you know, to go in. They didn't trust anyone because some group came 20 years ago and just shot people. Not a war, just shot people. So we went in, and I wish you could see the transformation. They know how to make rice now. They're selling the rice they're making. Their kids are in school. They have religion now. Church is coming in. Everything has changed. They're prosperous, they're alive because of goodness, because the people are so good to the church and so good to them. So uh, if you open the page now where it says, make an impact, you can see what money buys. We are really pushing $500 can help deliver safe drinking water to a poor village. You can't imagine how important safe drinking water is something that you and I just take for granted. You can read the rest of that if you would, please. Then you open, you see, where you write your prayer intentions. I think that's important. We do pray by name. And uh, the thing, the big thing there also is that 95.38% of everything we take in goes to the poor. There's no group like us. 95.38%. That is unbelievable today. And then uh, write your prayer request. Then in this envelope, you can put a check. You can put, uh, you can put cash. You can use your credit card. And uh, then please, when you finish with that, seal it. Two ways to do it. If you are prepared and inspired this morning, or if you are a procrastinator, I'll be in the back after Mass. No, we're going to go on with Mass. Uh, we'll go on. Uh, you can, if you're ready, you can hand me your brochure. Otherwise, bring it home and uh, please, it's already addressed. The deacon wants us to say a prayer for the woman who's being taken out. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace. Dear God, may your blessing upon, be upon that woman. Please give her the health she needs. Help her to find the right people who will help her. We ask this in Christ's name.